What's up, everybody? Iron Grey Bush here. Thank you for tuning in to this quick guide to the first dungeon in New World MMORPG called the Amrine or Amrine, I'm not sure, Expedition. A quick tip before you jump into the dungeon itself make sure you stop outside and speak to Barkamedes as featured here and grab the side quest for the succulent bones. You're already going to be killing the mobs that Barkamedes wants the bones from. You might as well grab the quest and get that extra EXP, gold, reputation, and armor cachet. The requirements for entering the dungeon is a minimum group size of three. At least one of the players has to have an Azoth staff, which you acquire from your main quest line between level 18 and 22 or so. It just depends on how fast you finish your quests. Additionally, whoever is initiating the actual instance will have to have an Amrine tuning orb, which is basically like a key. You get one Amrine tuning orb from your main story quest, but if you've already used it, you can also craft an Amrine tuning orb at a stone cutting table using the ingredients on the screen. So once you meet the requirements, go ahead and enter the dungeon. If you're not the one initializing the dungeon, you will get the expedition open window pop up. Just hit F1, it'll teleport you there from anywhere. So the first part of the dungeon is fairly one way. There's pretty much only one route. It'll bring you to the first big room where the initial quote unquote mechanics start. This is where you'll need your Azoth staff. Also in this room you'll encounter your first nest. If you don't kill the nest first, it will spawn waves of mobs. I think between two and four at a time. So make sure you kill the nest first or you might get overwhelmed with mobs. Also right next to this nest is a nice little loot chest. So make sure you scoop that up before moving on to the seal. So moving on to the Azoth seal. In front of the seal there's going to be a couple trash mobs. There's going to be an additional wave of mobs that spawn. One of them is going to be an elite. Make sure you're prepared for that. Once you clear them out, whoever has an Azoth staff will be able to go up to the seal and hold E on it and it will open the seal. Oh, what is you doing with that boss? Oh! Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that was cool. In this next big room are the dungeon's main mechanics. There's gonna be these three seals on the ground as you see here that are going to be locked. So just clear all the trash mobs in this room before moving on. That's gonna play a key role later. Also at the bottom of this little waterfall area are some harvesting and mining nodes if you wanna scoop them up. In this next room called the Grand Traverse is your first objective you need to make sure you meet so that you can unlock these seals in the previous room. Up here next to the nest, there's going to be this little rune stone that has a Azoth scripts on it. This is where you're going to utilize the Azoth staff again to translate these. Basically, just hold an E on it like the previous seal and uh, move on. So you're going to have to clear a couple of trash mobs and some elite mobs on the way to the next big room called the Broken Vestibule. And in the center of this room, there's going to be an orb which you have to unlock like another seal. And after you unlock this orb, this will unlock those three previous seals that we saw on the ground earlier. Additionally, once you hit that orb in the center of the room with the Azoth staff, it'll open up a door back to the room with the three seals on the bridge. But before you enter that room, make sure you scoop this chest up. Don't skip out on that loop. On the way to that room, you'll also pass your first respawn point in case you die. Hopefully you don't. If you follow my guide, you shouldn't die. Once you're back in the room with the three seals, one person will need to stand on each of these seals to activate them. Once all three are activated, the bridge will be built and three mobs will spawn. They're all elites, so make sure you are aware of that. If you have a pretty decent group like I have in this video here, we just brought them all together and then just chopped them all down. If you don't have a good group, I'd recommend probably kiting one or two until you can get the other ones down. Once you clear the mobs and get across the bridge to the next little area, make sure you scoop this chest up here on the left. You'll need it to activate the mechanics later. At the back of this next big room, there's going to be a little object you can interact with to spawn the next boss. And this is probably the second toughest boss in this dungeon, so you got to be pretty careful. I recommend clearing all the mobs in this room because there's some trash mobs and a couple of elite mobs. When you're fighting this boss, just make sure that you pay attention and don't get stuck in the AOE chain circle things. Sometimes it'll, he'll hit you with a stun and then you're going to be stuck in it for a second. Just try to dodge out of the way because soon after he's going to spawn some little ghost missiles. You can pretty much see the way the projectile is going to come before they actually fire. You'll see like a little purple beam or a laser, so just get out of the way, you'll be good. Once you kill the purple ghost boss, just make sure you scoop up the two chests in this room. There's one that's guarded by one trash mob back in the corner and then the one elite chest by his spawn point. In this next room is going to be a fire and a cold ghost elite. Sometimes they can be a little bit challenging if you do them together, so if you have a weaker group, make sure you just pull them separate. 
Once that room is cleared, you'll be coming up on your final respawn point before fighting the boss, Simon Gray. Make sure that your entire party is past these big doors right here before you start the boss fight because they do close and if you are outside of those doors when they close, they do not reopen until the whole party wipes and the boss is reset. In addition to that, if you fall during the battle, do not release because you will be locked behind the door and you will just be listening to your party as they get dismantled. When you get into the final boss's room, make sure you clear all the little trash miles to the left and the right, that way they're not aggro when you're in the middle of your fight. The tactic that I find works best for this boss, if you have a decent group, is just to ignore the ads and focus solely on killing the boss. Since I typically play a DPS hybrid tank build, I like to tag the mobs as soon as he spawns them because he spawns between two and four at a time and he doesn't stop spawning. I like to tag him with uh, some type of AOE attack so that they don't go straight to the healer because if you don't tag them, they're just going to aggro your healer and then your healer's running around trying to kite and heal at the same time and it doesn't work out. That's typically the easiest way to wipe. If you keep the adds close to Simon Gray as you're fighting him, then they'll just get wiped out by AOE attacks. And if you have the quest to pick up the heart gem, you can loot it right here. And that's all for the Amrine Dungeon Guide. Let me know what you think and let me know if you use different tactics or if I miss anything in the comments below. I appreciate all your time and like always, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the little bell. We appreciate all of your support. See you on the next one.